r slash ask reddit x homeless redditors what was the scariest thing that you ever saw on the streets nsfw there is a drainage ditch in my area that the local homeless people tend to bed down in a few years ago when i found myself destitute i spent one night down there that night i witnessed a molotov get thrown into another dude's spot which led to a huge fire that ran rampant through the area Yep, I bought a tent the next day and started camping in the local mountains. I was just sleeping around where other guys in my city sleep, then just see some teen stabbing one of the homeless guys multiple times, ran away from there, never turned back. Man there are some ducked up people out there, I hope somehow that guy survived. Waking up to a shotgun being pointed directly at my head. I wasn't truly homeless but had no money or bank card and was trying to get back to my parents following nearly bearing strangled to death by my ex. The actual fight happened whilst we were out so I had no spare no clothes. I'd left my wallet at his and only had a dying phone on me. I tried getting money for a train but only really managed enough for a bus fare to the next town and decided to try hitchhiking. Late into the night I gave up and managed to sneak into a barn where I was able to get comfortable enough to sleep. Turns out I didn't close the door enough and the farmer found me in the morning after taking his gun to investigate. He woke me up, I think he coughed loudly, with the gun painted at me and I nearly shat myself. It asked me what I thought I was doing in his barn and quizzed me on how I got in. He asked to see my arms before he lowered the gun and he started chatting. He was quite nice though and after talking to him for a while he took me back to his house and fed me and let me have a shower. People who had been homeless way longer than me, trust me, there is nothing scarier on the streets than the meth couple who this has been their day in and day out for one thousands of days. People joke about meth, but unless you've been around chronic users, you don't understand how truly scary it makes people become, like a whole new level of animalistic, impulsive, not right in the head people, I ducking hate meth. I had been homeless for a couple weeks now and had made friends with this couple. They seemed pretty chill but had a bit of a drinking problem. Anyway one night I was sleeping. Could hear some commotion going on. Couldn't make out who it was or what was going on. Until my buddy comes and sits on my sleeping bag. Blood pumping out of his neck. Like full on every time his heart beat it would splurt out. Not under huge pressure but it was pretty bad. I asked him what happened and he said he think his missus had cut his throat with a Stanley blade. He was so drunk he was not aware of how bad his injury was. And insisted I did not call an ambulance. So I called the police they called the ambulance. I see the dude a couple days later. Still homeless. Scar on his neck. He's ever so grateful the nurse had told him how lucky he was. He was literally a couple millimeters away from dying that night. Edit. I'm no longer homeless. This all happened about 6 year ago now. I no longer speak to him. This is another long story. She was arrested but not charged. Last year she committed suicide so she's no longer with us. I'm a woman in my early 20s. Not my brightest decision. But I slept in my car for several weeks. When I was completely out of money. Every night I parked in a small cul-de-sac. As far as I knew. The area was office only. So I didn't take anybody's parking lot and in the morning I left. I worked a lot. So usually I slept like a log. One night though I woke up. Feeling anxious for some reason. I looked up and saw a softly illuminated window right above me. Nice. Warm light as if from a grandma bedside lamp. I freaked out a bit and fumbled for my keys. I better sit the rest of the night out at McDonald's or something. Then I noticed a silhouette not far away. A man was standing still and watching me. He didn't knock on my window glass. Didn't try to talk or anything. He was just watching. I booked it out of that caldy sack real quick. You know. The thing that freaks me out the most is not even the fact that he could assault or rob me then. But the realization that he may have watched me every other night. But I was too tired to notice that earlier. Cold weather. I thought I was going to die one night I was so cold. I remember waking up thinking you need to move or you are going to die. This was the scariest thing for me. I ended up sleeping in buses. 
Burning sterno. It's like jellied rubbing alcohol that burns for a good while. I would try to constantly be walking cause if I stopped I'd probably fall asleep and die. I also sometimes rested under a bridge from time to time. One time I fell asleep under the bridge and I woke up finally feeling warm and cozy and thought it was nice to finally be able to rest. Then I realized that it's way too cold for this and I can't move without that frozen fingers pain everywhere. Struggled real hard to get my sterno out and could barely bend my fingers enough to light it. Like my hands were nearly useless. I'm really glad I woke up. Biggest thing. 5 feet 3 115 lb was how often people try to abduct you that and how often people try to serve you tampered food the teenagers trying to get clout by assaulting pranking you is another one coming back to my tent and there is blood everywhere was a fun one i was homeless back when i was 19 after a few weeks of sleeping rough i was approached one evening by a man dressed as a priest at this point i had no idea if he was a priest or someone out to deceive me being wary of the priest outfit I straight away told him I have no interest in talking about God. What he said next has stuck with me ever since I am not here to talk about God. I'm here to make sure you are safe. We talked for quite a while until it was dark and that's when he offered me a bed for the night. Alarm bells were going off in my head but he had seemed genuine so I went with him. He drove me to a house in the suburbs and asked me to wait in his car whilst he spoke to someone. A few minutes later he returned with another man who offered to let me sleep in his garage for the night. Everything inside me was saying this is a bad idea but I accepted as I had nothing left to lose. The garage was pretty standard. Tools, workbench etc. Except in the corner there was a box spring and some blankets. There was a connecting door to the main house that the man told me he would have to keep locked during the night. He apologized but said he had kids in the house and couldn't take the risk. The priest asked if he could come by in the morning and speak to me. Then went into the house the man. I don't think I slept at all that night. I was terrified. I had no reason to be afraid of either man as they had been nothing but nice to me. However after living on the streets for a while you come to learn that nothing comes for free and you shouldn't trust anyone. The morning rolls around and the most amazing thing happened. The man knocked on his own garage door to ask me if he could come in. This might not sound amazing but when you've been living rough with zero privacy, someone asking if they can enter your space, which is actually his space, gives you a sense of being human again. Someone actually respects you enough to ask your permission. I spoke with both him and the priest every day for the 7 weeks I slept in his garage. Between them they managed to get me into a subsidized efficiency apartment. Think studio apartment but a lot smaller. Got me a job and helped me get my life back on track. That was over 20 years ago and I will also be indebted to both of them. I still send Christmas cards to the man whose garage was my home and visited him 2 years ago for Thanksgiving. Sadly, the priest passed away a few years back but I guarantee that if there is a heaven, he got fast tracked in. I was staying in a homeless shelter that had a men's side and a woman's side. Most of the men were convicted sex offenders. In the 8 months I spent in that hell on earth, I was friends with 3 women who were raped by some of these men. The truly scary thing, the women were actively discouraged from telling anyone what had happened, especially the police. If they filed a report with the police, they were permanently barred from the shelter. That place, one of the most celebrated in my state, regularly has the mayor and governor drop by, is the most evil place on earth. I don't know if it counts but I lived in a van for a month or so when I was in college, and would sleep at the park. I didn't necessarily see it but I heard it and it is burned into my mind forever. A group of the local hobos beat a guy near to death and they all raped his girlfriend wife then beat her to death. I found a new park after that. What did you do when you heard that? Did you call the police? Everyone is gonna try to steal from your ass so watch your shit. Keep your mouth shut and find a good place that is desolated from nocturnal animals and a-holes. Don't try to make friends they will turn on you in a heartbeat. So I lived in my car but I remember seeing this woman and talking to her outside a store when I was just chilling eating some food and she told me she had been homeless literally her entire life and had never sleep on a proper bed in her life. I asked how old she was. She told me she was 53. It was scary to me because I realized that that could have easily been me. I think about that woman every single day. If she survived that long as a homeless person, you know she is not to be trifled with. 
I was working in a mountain town and couldn't afford rent, even with two jobs. One night I was wasted after work. Me and a work friend were always there by ourselves closing so the bar was free game. Left work at 2am walked the hour and a half back to my tent outside of town, while being stalked by a mountain lion. I assume I looked injured and could be an easy meal. It was terrifying. I had a digital camera with me so I just kept pointing it in the area of the ridge where I could hear it walking and flashed repeatedly. Made it home safe. Another night after closing. Different campsite I must have smelled like a huge gyro after working a double at Pitters in Paradise. Got into my sleeping bag in my tent. I was just about to doze off when I heard big crunches of a black bear sniffing me out. I was frozen with terror. The bear put his about against the nylon inches above my head. Hot steam on my face. I had pulled the sleeping bag up to my cheeks petrified when I slapped the bear's nose above my forehead. It was an involuntary reaction and I felt stupid but I spooked the bear and it took off. I got an apartment with some friends soon after. Let's see. Funny. Ish. Guy at the shelter I stayed at got stabbed in the ribs by another guy. The guy who stabbed him just walked inside and attempted to go to sleep. While the guy who stabbed is sitting on a bench literally spurting blood out of his side and he lights a cigarette. When the staff called 911 and tried to help him he was pushing them off saying he was fine. Horrible. There was a gas station down the street. A guy paid for gas. Took the hose and doused himself in gasoline. I was smoking outside and I remember him walking by outside the yard area with a lighter in his hand. Arm fully extended out. He was very very mentally ill so I didn't think anything of it. I couldn't smell gas or anything like that. I continue to smoke. Light another one up. About 10 minutes later I'm inside bullshitting at the front desk and a dude runs in the front door and shouts. Give me wet towels a guy's set himself on fire across the street. Homeless shelters aren't in good areas. So I just walked out casually thinking some idiot at the apartments across the street had set a rug on fire and the dude who ran in was just being a dumbass. I walk out the front door and sure enough, on one of the stairwells there's flames. My thought process was basically, yep, some dumb ducks litter oh duck. The rug sat up, me and three other guys ended up being the ones to put him out. He wouldn't though. I don't know if the gas had to burn off first, but probably? I don't really remember putting him out. I just remember after. I don't remember a smell or anything. The morbid thing I do remember is he was out and he just kept shouting. My balls. My balls are on fire. Put out my balls. He died three days later. I was told it wasn't the first time he'd done something like this. The shelter ended up sending me to therapy. And the woman was the best therapist I'd ever had. I still get weird sometimes and can't really watch people on fire in movies anymore. All sorts of the usual shit. Dicey situations with dicey people. But the one where I was spine chilling terrified. I had found a seemingly nice quiet cut in the woods. Shade. Private. I'm set. I wake up to a most guttural yowl at 2am. A pack of feral cats that the adjacent 50 year old rain man had lured to his property with cans of wet food. They stood on the fence yowling, eyes reflecting as we started the other down. I was homeless in Hawaii for a month after I got out of the army. Nothing I saw was ever like oh shit him or die. But there are a lot of homeless meth heads wandering the streets. I watched people having arguments with a spoon they were holding. People eating sand at the beach. People wearing weak old shit caked pants. Meth is ducking wild. Stick to weed and shrooms. My father lives on Maui and the first time I went to visit him, I was shocked at the number of homeless there. I specifically remember this one elder homeless dude who the locals dubbed trash bag Jesus because he wore nothing except a black lawn bag as basically a dress. This guy walks around the entire Kiahai area all day long with no shoes just talking to himself. According to my father, the locals try to give him clothes and food all the time but he refuses due to being paranoid schizophrenic. He never bothers anyone. He's just in his own world. Edit. A word. There's a YouTube channel called Soft White Underbelly which interviews prostitutes, disturbed homeless, drug addicts, tricks, gang members, etc. In LA's Skid Row, but them, gang rape, torture and murder are common on the street. Listening to their stories is cray. I'm currently homeless and this is why I stay out of homeless shelters and away from other homeless. Fist fights at 2am. Loud arguments. 
people trying to get into your shit while you sleep. You don't get sleep in those places anyway and it's all risk with no benefit. When you own nothing. You can't afford to lose the two shirts. Pair of pants. Three pair of socks. Cell phone and phone charger. Lucky enough to have a cell phone with no service but workable with Wi-Fi. Can't lose it. I couch surf ATM. Which has its risks. But overall it's much safer than the shelters. Downside being I never know where I'll be so finding work is near impossible. Almost had an apartment and work at one point. But roommate started hearing voices and kicked me out before I could be added to the lease. Previous roommate. Two ago. That put me in the homeless situation also started hearing voices and straight up disappeared on my ass. I think I must drive people crazy or something. Stayed in my car for 9 months. I worked. And past 6 months been couch surfing. Worked when I can afford to. At some point I'll run out of couches and be forced into shelters and around other homeless and that scares the shit out of me. At some point I'll have to devolve to becoming accustomed to living on the streets. Doing anything to survive. If I don't find someone willing to put me up till I can get back on my feet. Which won't happen. Everyone who's let me crash longer than one night has been a creep with no respect. In my years being a homeless junkie and then cleaning up kinder and working at a homeless shelter slash on the street. I saw a dude try to murder his girlfriend with a machete. Like full on swing and barely miss and my heart was tucking pounding like I was sure I was about to witness a murder. I also saw countless ODs and shit. Saw a girl beating to shit who had just been raped asking for help. Saw a dude get stabbed. Saw a big huge dude have a heart attack and die and the paramedics frantically trying to give him chest compressions and shit and he was just flopping around. Saw a lot of shit honestly but those were the ones that come to mind as scaring the shit out of me the most. I have a million stories from those years and half sound fake cause they are so ridiculous. Was homeless for a summer and an acquaintance through the party scene of the town invited me to crash on her couch. Woke up in the middle of the night to her screaming into her phone about how they are out to get her and are setting the world up for destruction. Pretended like I was still asleep and got out of there the next day real quick. Smart move leaving. Otherwise they might have targeted you too. Police. Hands down. 17 years old. Dead asleep in the back of a car belonging to my then girlfriend's parents in a parking garage. It's freezing outside. February in Canada. 3 AM. I'm awoken by cops dragging me from the car. Raggling my sleepy self. I'm 6 feet 2. 210. Yelling about the weapon. They just won't shut up about a weapon. I've no idea to what they're referring. I try to explain that I've got permission to be in the car. Gave them the number for the parents. Worried about waking them up. The weapon. I asked them to show me what weapon they found. Thinking maybe a parent hid a bat under the seat for protection. They pulled on the handle of a window scraper with squeegee that was covered by a black garbage bag full of clothes intended for the goodwill. I asked them how it was they felt threatened by a squeegee when I was ducking asleep. I was urged to shut the ducking up, then driven to an all night laundromat, and told to sleep across the super comfortable plastic chairs. Ducking cops. Never been homeless but I used to see a homeless addict couple in the city all the time. They'd either be passed out on the sidewalk or fighting each other in the middle of the street. Their favorite move was to grab the other then spin them around and throw them. Kinda like a hammer throw except they'd both be flung over a beater or two and completely unable to break their fall. Pretty scary seeing them repeatedly smash themselves against the road. Once the bus I was on almost ran them over. They'd also just start sprinting across busy traffic for no reason. One time the backpack the guy was wearing got stuck on a fence and he was begging for it. The fence. To release him. Probably thinking someone was holding him or something. I used to wander around a neighborhood with lots of homeless people. With a group of maybe 8 or 10 boy and girls between 9 and 15 or so. I was in my early 20s. I shared some pot with them sometimes. But never stayed to make conversation or anything because they were into sniffing glue, the little ones, or heavier stuff and I was just a hippie guy playing shitty life. The thing is, they had managed to open an underground empty water deposit. I don't know the term for what I was exactly. Some valves and pipes in there. And they used to go there to hide and do their usual bus scenes. But some spended the nights inside. I don't remember exactly a date. Just that the autumn was close and the days were becoming rainy. A tragic night the rain became a storm very quickly. 
don't know exactly what happened. I wasn't there, but four of the kids drowned inside. After that, the rest of them disappeared. Maybe they were rescued. Maybe they just moved on. And the place was soon sealed and forgotten. The neighborhood was gentrified not much later and I don't think anyone remembers about what happened. Not what I saw. What I heard. If that counts. For a while I slept in an empty warehouse. I'm in the UK. So it was a huge Victorian building with about 6 floors. I slept on the 3rd or 4th floor. Out of the way of casual intruders. Drunks and prostitutes use that space. And one night I heard a load of shouting and a female screaming from the ground floor. Now I was 16. A junkie and about 120 pounds. So I wasn't in any position to do much. But I crept down the steps to see what was happening. By the time I got there, the place was empty and the noise had stopped so I went back upstairs. I found out the next day they found a body in the wasteland outside. Turns out the woman was a prostitute. They assumed her client stabbed her after a struggle and she'd made a run for it before he caught her and finished the job. Always wonder if I'd been able to help. But I'd have probably got stabbed too. Colon. Was sleeping in the hills at our local park. Everybody called it Hobo Hill. We all used to sit in the creek in the park because it wasn't really visible from the road and cops mostly left you alone. A group of us were sitting there, a mix of 18, 20, 25, 30 years olds, smoking and passing a handle of whiskey back and forth. One guy got mad because some teen wouldn't pass the bottle. They bickered back and forth for a minute and I didn't think anything of it. No biggie. People fight over bottles all the time on the street. I went back to smoking and shooting the shit with a guy next to me. Next thing we know the kid is yelling and screaming. The guy had picked up a pretty big rock and wailed on the teen's head to get him to give him the bottle. The kid was bleeding really really bad and you could tell he was hurt pretty bad. Dude had grabbed the bottle and was swigging more of it. Someone called the cops and said where we were so the kid could get some medical care but pretty much everyone dipped out. Never really saw the kid again. I'm pretty sure he's okay. But he didn't really come back to the streets. He was young. So I'm hoping he went back to his parents house. That wasn't the worst I've seen. But it was one of the more memorable moments. Edit. A word. Snow. I'm a big. Scary dude so I never had trouble with people picking on me or whatever. In that sense the streets were safe to me. But seeing snow for the first time that year just made me cry and panic. It was too early for snow. I wasn't ready for that type of cold and was hoping to be on my feet again before the winter came. Beautiful thing like snow just ducked me up in so many ways. I saw a really angry bald man aggressively masturbating his flaxid dong. TBH that was probably the most scary thing. Getting in an argument with a guy who then proceeded to beat the shit out of me. Don't know what was mozzy scary. When he pulled a knife or crawling for safety without anyone helping me shortly before. I got out somehow. Don't even remember how. Another time I went to sleep at this crazy place we were hanging out. It was messy and filthy with comforters and pillows everywhere. My friend. Now oh dead. Died at 21 on the streets from bad ecstasy. Called on me right as I was falling asleep. He wanted to sing Michael Bubble with me. Alright I said. 10 minutes later the room was engulfed in flames. Has he not called on me I know I'd be dead. That sits with me. A shame I couldn't save him in return. R.I.P.C.C. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.